Well, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm really excited about the first new product we're going to launch in 2020. And here it is right here, designed by Jerson Nolasco. <laughs> if you didn't see the previous video on why we came up with this tool, I'll put a link in the description below the video and go watch it. But this is very clever. We had a diesel here that had a pesky coolant leak. In fact, it had two very small coolant leaks and we couldn't find them. And we were just sitting around saying, well, why don't we use our brake bleeder tank? See, this is our brake bleeder tank. There's the cap on it. It goes onto the brake uh, fluid reservoir so you can flush new fluid to the system very easily and very quickly. And we thought, well, if we could come up with an adapter to put on the end of the hose and use the pressure tank, we could pressurize the cooling system and find the leak. So this was developed in about three hours. Now this is the second prototype, so we've refined it a little bit. It just replaces the radiator cap. When you put it on either the radiator or the coolant reservoir tank, you need to tighten it down to seal it. You're gonna to have to adapt the hose to this cap right here and pump up pressure, and that's what we did, and we found the leak. The leak was coming out of both the upper radiator hose and the short hose that's between the water pump housing and the thermostatic. Very small leaks, and they would have been hard to find because they're kind of buried down in the engine, particularly if you went outside and tried to run the car. What's nice about our tank is it has a gauge, and you really need to have a gauge when you're pressurizing your cooling system. You do not want to go over 15 PSI. And of course, our tank has a release right here, releases pressure. And of course, you just replace it with your normal cap like that. So, And now I want to show you what caused a leak. And it'll kind of prove my point, as I've said many times, two of the most common neglected maintenance items on these 30-plus-year-old cars are, number one, brake systems, number two, cooling systems. There are actually two things that cause these coolant leaks that I'm going to point out to you now. This is the water pump housing here, and this short section of radiator hose fits right on there between this housing and the thermostat housing. This hose was recently replaced by a mechanic. Uh, records show probably a few years ago, but they replaced it with the wrong hose. Someone thought, well, I'm just going to cut a radiator hose. You can see where they just cut it with a razor blade. And this is just standard upper and lower radiator hose. And this is incorrect. If you have one of these older diesels, you do not use standard radiator hose. It's not tough enough to survive down in this environment. You get the extra heat coming from the exhaust manifold here, and it's really hard on the radiator hose. It has to be a heavy duty. Look at the difference. This is the custom hose we cut here in our shop and sell with our short hose kits. Look at the difference in thickness. Look at the difference in material. This is a reinforced web material. This is just a weak uh, rubber hose and you can see the difference in thickness. So if you replace the short hose, you want to replace it with a very heavy hose like you see here. So this hose didn't survive. You can see the clamps have been over torqued a lot trying to keep the hose from leaking and that just not worked. So that's the first reason. The second reason is the corrosion on the aluminum parts on this housing. So let's take a look first at the upper one. This is where the upper radiator hose was leaking. Look at the corrosion right here. It's all rough. And this was probably not clean when the hoses were replaced. And then let's take a look at the one that goes down into the short hose. This was the one that was leaking from the top of the short hose. Look at the corrosion right there. And this corrosion is bad enough. It goes from here all the way around to there, and it's deep in that aluminum. So it's really tough, particularly with a weak hose like this, to get a good clamping surface. When you have this much corrosion, on your housings, you're going to either have to find a good use replacement or you're going to have to do some modifications and repair work. I'll put a link in the description below this video that'll take you to some more information on how I repair these when they're like this. But this is gonna take some serious cleaning, some serious repair work. Here's another thing you need to know. 
there's evidence of rust in the cooling system. And I'm sure what happened was the previous owner of the car would drive the car and lose coolant. Well, they'd just throw water into the tank. And eventually the coolant was watered down. And that was the case when I removed it from this engine. Well, this is going to even increase the corrosion problems because you're thinning out the coolant consistency. So don't just add water. If you're low on fluid, you add 50% coolant and 50% water, or you're going to weaken the coolant and cause internal engine corrosion. And that corrosion, by the way, just keeps eating away on this aluminum. The second thing that you can help to prevent this is put the clamp, you don't want the clamp in here. If you put the clamp on the inside, this will allow moisture to wick in and continue to corrode the aluminum. Put the clamp right out close to the edge and that'll prevent any moisture from getting in behind the sealing surface of the hose into this aluminum nipple area. So those are some things you can do, but come on folks, take care of your cooling system. Coolant doesn't last forever and neither does brake fluid. Along with using clean coolant and the proper mix of coolant, you also want to use Mercedes-Benz specification coolant if you want to prevent this type of corrosion on your aluminum parts. Now I've got a number of housings here on the bench. I'm going to have you look at them. I'll let you be the judge. How many of these had good quality coolant in them and how many not so much? How many of these engines were neglected by the owners who did not change their coolant or use the proper coolant. Okay, let's look at this one. That looks pretty good. And I started to clean this here with a little sandpaper. You see there's very slight pitting, but this is the one that's gonna go back on the engine I just showed you, okay? So that one's good. Uh, then we'll take a look at this one. Oh yeah, this is the one I removed. Look at the pitting right there. See, see that, it pit? that's almost too much pitting. Uh, <laughs> and you can tell this one's really been neglected. Uh, look at the rust inside, so we'll put this one over on this side. Uh, this one's pretty clean, a little bit of corrosion here, maybe, uh, yeah, still usable, only a very slight amount of corrosion, that one's okay. This one's real nice, look at that. This came off an old 240D, and I think it was uh, run with proper coolant, okay. This one, quite a bit of corrosion right on that edge. Uh, this one, look at, the, look at the rust inside and the corrosion on the nipple, so not so much over here. And of course this one, you can see this one was severely neglected. Or should I say, <laughs> the coolant was severely neglected. Look at that short hose. Look at the corrosion in there. So you can see it's really important to take care of your cooling system on these older cars. So if you do pick up an older car, or you're not sure about the condition of the cooling system in your own car, here's a quick test you can do. Remember, you can look at the coolant over there and it might look okay, particularly if it's been recently changed. But the real test is to get inside these radiator hoses, unless they've been changed too. And you can also look inside the radiator. But I usually pull the top radiator hose, drain a little coolant out, just pull the top radiator hose and start looking. If you see rust like this inside the hose, then you've got a problem, okay? You really do have a problem. This is what the hoses should look like when you take them off. You're gonna get a, you know, a little bit of staining down in there, but they should not be rusty. So if you see evidence of rusty hoses, expect there's gonna be some corrosion on those aluminum parts. You're gonna have potential leaks at all the clamps, and you're gonna really have to do something to clean the engine, to flush it out, and probably replace most of the hoses. But right away, what you'd want to do is you'd want to do a pressure test. And we've just completed the final prototype and we're ready to go into production. Let me show you how that works now as I pressure test this 300 SD. Here's the final design. After about two weeks, we're ready to ship. And let me tell you, this is pretty intricate. This took a lot more work than we originally thought because you have to be absolutely certain that you can make this seal 100% against either the coolant reservoir tank or the radiator, or you'll get false readings. If you've got leaks and they're in the cap, and that's not gonna help you test the cooling system or particularly test for head gasket leaks. There's a lot of parts in here and a lot of machining that went into make up this cap. You just remove the old cap, and I recommend you, know, you clean the seating area before you put on the new cap. This is adjustable. So I'm going to put it on there, 
and back this out until I can close the cap. Okay, see now it's loose and I can just turn it a little bit and get it so it just tightens down just like a regular cap. Okay, and if you have to, you can get a 11 millimeter wrench and tighten it a little bit further. But we found that generally finger tight is enough. Then I'm going to take my a brake bleeder tank and take off the adapter for the master cylinder reservoir and I'm just going to plug it right in here to this cap and I can start pumping up pressure. Let's see if this old 300 SD is going to pass the test here. going to bring it up to about 12 pounds and then we're going to wait. Once again, if you have the slightest leak in the cooling system, it's going to start leaking down very slowly, very quickly. The needle may jump a little bit when you build pressure because you might get some back pressure from the cooling system itself. But look at that. It's stabilized. It's not moving. I know I do not have any coolant leaks. But I tell you, if you've got a mysterious leak, in other words, if you're adding coolant every couple weeks and you do not see any leaks, you need to do a pressure test. Because a lot of times these real small leaks, I had one time where it's just a pinhole in the hose, they won't show up until you're driving at high speed and high engine temperature. But a pressure test like this will show those leaks up right away without even having to get out on the road and drive the car. So those of you out there that already have my pressure brake bleeder, this cap adapter is ready to ship now on our website.